Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another video. I know you already saw the thumbnail. I know you know what this is about. Uh, but I'm starting this kind of like I did a year ago when I got this motorcycle. I'm still keeping it out of frame Welcome for just to a bit. the one year in review of the 2023 300 XC known as Loretta the Game Changer. This bike has been very, very important to me uh, and to this channel and I think to a lot of you guys. Um, this was the first new bike I bought expressly with the intent of doing a bunch of YouTube content. Um, also, I wanted a new bike because I like new bikes. I was able to talk my wife into this motorcycle because I knew it would do really well on YouTube and you guys have proven that that is the case. Um, also, that has set in motion all kinds of wonderful things uh, from a ton of growing um, as for subscribers and all that stuff to getting a deal with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, uh, to uh, deals with other companies, giving me parts and things like that. Really, this bike really truly has changed my life. Um, and that's a pretty cool thing. Who knew that spending $12,000 <laughs> would actually, uh, like actually benefit me. It's been incredible. Let's go over it. Um, yeah, let's talk all about it guys. Here we go. All right, if you're new here, if you're new to the channel and you're like, wow, what is this guy talking about? Make sure you go back and look at our 2023 300XC video playlist. Check out a bunch of videos, reviews, things like that. Um, we have been focusing hard on this bike for a year now, uh, and I think it has provided a ton of content for you guys. I know it's provided a bunch of enjoyment for me. Let's start with the shortest list I can start. <laughs> things I don't like or problems that I've had. Um, that is a very, very short list on this motorcycle. Uh, honestly, the biggest thing that I don't like about the bike is the fuel tank and pickup situation. Now, if you guys don't know, the fuel pump rides about right there <laughs> at its lowest point. And that's a problem because you have fuel all the way down here and about like that level on the other side. So they rely on a little sock filter to pick up the fuel as it bounces around if you're in rough terrain. It kind of holds on to the gas, it's kind of like a sponge. Uh, it does work, it does, um, it does what it's intended to do, but it is not the best setup, guys. It really isn't. Um, it doesn't get all the gas out of the tank. Uh, if you're on smooth ground or something like that, it really doesn't get all the gas out of the tank. Now, of course, you can lay the bike over and all that, uh, but I know people who've lost races. I know people who've been kind of not really stranded out there because again, like I said, you can lay the bike over and get the gas into the middle, but it's a real pain in the butt. That is a design flaw from KTM. I don't like that. They need to fix that. They have not yet fixed that. The 24s are the same way. Uh, the four strokes are the same way. It's just dumb. They need to come up with a low pickup. Uh, so that is one thing that I don't like. I also don't like the fact that it doesn't have a Kickstarter and it has no way to install a Kickstarter. As you can see, there's no places on the cases. There's nowhere to put a Kickstarter. I don't like that. Uh, not for an off-road bike, not for a bike that I like to take on what I call adventure riding, which is going way out in the middle of nowhere in the hard stuff uh, where a battery could fail, a fuse could blow, which has happened to me. Um, things like that. I, just don't like the fact that it doesn't have a Kickstarter. Uh, I really, really wish that it did or had a way to put one on there, but oh well. I guess that's part of the way the world is going. Um, and you know, cue all the YZ guys. I know my kids are with you guys 100%. So, um, but we're not here to talk about YZs. We're here to talk about this bike. Um, I also don't like the fact that the stator, the stock stator, is incredibly underpowered. Uh, it will run the fuel system, the ignition system, the starting system just, pro just fine, but uh, when you add a fan or a light on there, you are starting to tax it very heavily. Uh, I did finally have mine uh, kill the battery when I had the fan running and the light running. So that sucks. I don't like that. I wish KTM would fix that on these bikes. I know the 24Ws, 
have that. The TPIs had more power output, but these things, and I think the 24 XCs are the same way. They just don't have the juice. I don't like that. Um, I really, really, really wish they would do that stock. Uh, now this one's been upgraded. I got it rewound and all that, but that costs money that you really shouldn't have to spend. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mention this, even though this is kind of a common thing on all KTMs, uh, linkage KTMs for me, is I really don't like how low that linkage sticks down below the bike. Um, it's a common KTM thing. I don't know why they feel like they need to do that because Yamaha linkages don't stick down that far. Honda linkages don't stick down that far. And as a guy who likes to do hard stuff, riding the hard, rocky, gnarly, jumping over logs, things like that, that's kind of a pain in the butt. I don't like that very much. All right, I think that wraps up the things that I like just don't like about the way the bike was designed. Now, let's talk about problems that I've had. It's really, really, really short list of things, guys. Um, actually, and hold on, let me go back to, this bike now has 161.8 hours in one year. It's actually a little under a year when I'm filming this, um, but 161.8 100, hours on this bike. And I really haven't had any problems uh, that KTM caused. Uh, the only problem that I've had really was I ended up blowing a fuse in a race because I put an aftermarket wiring harness on here from True North Motos and I, not True North Motos, I did not insulate the two plugs that go to the light switch. One of them touched the ground, it popped the fuse. The fuse did exactly what it was supposed to, it protected the rest of the system, uh, but it did make it so it wouldn't start. Fortunately, I didn't kill the bike during the race. It was only after the race I figured it out. Uh, but that sucks. I don't like that at all. That really blows. I think that that's uh, stupid. It goes back to, um, but I guess it was a problem, uh, but that real, the real problem goes to the fact that it doesn't have a Kickstarter. Uh, if it had had a Kickstarter, that wouldn't have even mattered. I could have just like kept riding, kick it, whatever, no big deal. But since it doesn't have one, that was a little bit bigger of a problem. Oh, actually guys, one more thing that I don't like about the bike uh, way it comes stock is the mapping on this. The fuel, mainly the fuel mapping, not the ignition of the power valve mapping, but the fuel mapping on this thing stock is very rich. Uh, it makes the bike spooge quite a bit. Uh, mine is still spooging, even though I have a different tune and all that. But these things spooge like crazy when they're stock. They fouled a lot of plugs. Uh, they put a weird plug in it. I guess that's another thing I could say I don't like. So they put a BR80S plug in it, even though every 300, since the dawn of 300s, this had a BR70S or variant. And um, so I never fouled a plug. I put a seven in it relatively early on and I've never had a problem fouling the plug, but I know people who have. So that's not awesome. Uh, KTM needs to work on that and they have. The 24s are better. The most recent update on the map is much better. Um, but the mapping and the tuning could be better on these. And I know that because of what I've done to the bike. And we'll get to that here in a bit. I think that's it, guys, of the downsides to this motorcycle, whether it be something I don't like or problems I've had. And I really, like I said, 161 hours, almost 162. I really haven't had any problems. Um, I did a piston at 100 hours-ish, somewhere in there. You guys could probably correct me. Uh, and tell me what, what it actually was. Um, but the motor has been flawless. The, the piston looked great when I pulled it out. The cylinder looked brand new when I pulled it out. Um, put a new one in there. It's been absolutely perfect. The engine has been amazing. The transmission is amazing. Uh, the chassis is amazing. I love the chassis. It's very sharp. It's very uh, scalpel -y. That's a new word. Uh, but <laughs> it's... Uh, I like it. For a race bike, the thing is incredible. Uh, the, I really, really like the tra uh, chassis, uh, transmission, motor combination. It's absolutely incredible. I really like the suspension stock. Honestly, the air forks that came on it were very, very good. The, I mean, even in stock form, of course, we're a TBT shop, so we valve them because that's what we do. But honestly, uh, I've ridden a stock one of these relatively recently. Uh, it's pretty freaking good. <laughs> stock so i don't really have a problem with the stock suspension the shock was a little bit yeah it kind of had some funkiness because they changed the link uh on it so the link rate the the progress the progression rate in the linkage um was kind of funky and caused some weird spikes 
I think it may have caused one of my crashes. Um, I hit something that just like completely flew, like flung me over the handlebars. Um, and it don't think it should have done it. And I think that was because the way the shock was set up stock. Um, we fixed that since with the TBT valving and it's really, really good now, but, um, stock, it was a little bit, eh, not that awesome. All in all guys, I, in a stock form, I love, love, love this motorcycle. It was the best bike I've ever ridden bone stock. In fact, the very first race I took it to, it had about five hours on it. All I had done was put hand guards on it. I uh, left the stock skid plate on it. I put my Mako 360 on it. I took it to a race and I won a race on it. So the bike is good. It really truly is a game changer. The smoothness of the motor, the power delivery, the map switch, all that stuff, everything about this thing is amazing. I, that's another thing I have to mention, the map switch. The fact that this thing has two very, very different maps in it from the factory is absolutely amazing. The white map is very hard and duro very easy to ride. The green map is terrifyingly fast, like an open class motocrosser from the 90s. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's absolutely incredible. It has that. The electronic power valve is part of that. That's what really makes that thing do so much is that the power valve now is not just a light switch that opens at a certain time. It can be tuned to open on a curve uh, like, any, like snowmobiles and all that kind of have been for a long time. So it gives the tuner much more control, uh, which really can make this bike absolutely incredible. So um, now guys, let's talk about all the things that I've done to it. Uh, what some of my favorite mods are, what some of the mods I don't think are worth it are. And uh, yeah, we'll go around the bike. Um, let's start with the suspension because that's the thing I've spent the most money on. Now, fortunately, um, for me with the channel and with the shop and all that, I haven't ha had to spend any of my own money, but it would cost someone very much money to do what I've done in test. So, uh, let's start there. Shock, stock shock is great. Um, with a little bit of valving and, uh, some fixing inside, you can make the stock shock very, very good. Um, I like the stock shock. There's no real problem. I put the WP bladder kit on it right from the get go right there. Um, I like the fact that the control or the uh, clickers are toolless up here. You can get to the low speed and the high speed easily. <laughs> it's a lie to think that you can get to that without tools. Um, maybe if you have the tiniest fingers ever, but um, that takes a screwdriver. Uh, but it's easy to get to with the screwdriver, super simple. So I like the shock. Uh, no need to, in my opinion, to replace that thing. Now I heard that the national shock is very good. We may try one of those down the road, but um, stock, that shock can be made to work very, very well. The forks, the air forks are really good. The 23 air forks are the best air forks I've ever ridden. I don't think someone really needs to spend the money unless you like to go fast or you really, really, really like the, well, actually fast isn't the problem. It's <laughs> if you like the really rocky stuff at speed, the air forks are not the best. So um, valving them made them very good and doable and I could have lived with that forever, it was fine. Um, and relatively inexpensive if you paid us to do it because it's pretty simple, just shuffling some shims around. Uh, no extra parts. Now, after that, I went to the 6500 kit on the forks and that was a level up. We valved it, uh, we got it dialed in, very, very, very good fork setup with the 6500. It's about $1,500, including springs. Um, so it's an expensive upgrade. Uh, that's the parts, not including our valving. So it's about two grand by the time you pay for valving and all that stuff. So very expensive setup. Uh, most recently though, I've gone to the Del Saggio Spheres and they're yet another level up. <laughs> they are incredible. They are basically a copy of the old WP um, bladder fork. So it's a closed chamber fork but with a nitrogen bladder or air bladder, I don't put nitrogen in it. Um, air bladder in there that you can tune, it's like the ICS spring, um, super tunable, really cool. Um, amazing parts, like the coatings and all the anodizing and the, the just the quality of aluminum that they use is incredible. The Sagio spheres are a level above the 6500s in my opinion. They are absolutely incredible. Uh, I have not yet valved them in stock form 
they're brilliant. Um, now I cannot wait till we valve them and make them even better. Now those things are like $1,700 with springs. Uh, so you're looking at like $2,200 by the time you valve it and all that good stuff. So it's expensive, but I think it's worth it if you can afford it. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. Um, let's go to the first thing I did actually, which is the Mako 360, guys. In my opinion, you need a Mako 360. I don't care if you're young, old, beat up, not beat up. Get yourself a Mako 360. It, it's a level of comfort that you can't get from any other part. It's bolt on, there's no tuning. You just put it on there. You can change the polymers out and all that good stuff, but like, it's the easiest way to get some comfort in your bike like without really doing anything other than swapping some bolts. <laughs> so yeah, I cannot suggest the Mako 360 enough. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, talk to Lance and Lisa, get one. Uh, I have the SX version. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit sexier. Um, honestly, you don't need the SX version. Uh, you can save yourself about 75 bucks and get the other one, spend that on tires and gas. I am running the Dually, which again is another upgrade. I like that a lot, honestly, with the the way these are with the separate things, the dually helps keep this solid in a crash. It doesn't want to twist anything. So that to me is a nice upgrade. The SX part, yeah, whatever. So now let's just walk around the bike because I've, I've got a list here of things. Um, all right, and so let's talk about motor upgrades, guys. Um, as dirt bikers, we're always trying to find some sort of upgrade, even though most of us couldn't possibly ride these bikes to its limit anyway. Um, but I can say that more power, more torque makes them easier to ride, uh, especially in the hard stuff. It's just an easier setup. It just, yeah, you can be lazier for an old fat guy like me. It's really awesome. So motor upgrades. Uh, I started with the RK Tech head, um, high compression head from Kelsey at RK Tech. It was very good. The bike ran very well. Um, but I always felt like I was leaving something on the table because we could not tune the ECU. Uh, Kelsey doesn't have a way to tune ECU, so I just put it in there and it was okay. Fortunately, the bike was kind of rich, so actually that helped um, with the RK Tech because normally when I put an RK Tech on a carb bike, I have to richen up the jets to get it to run right. So fortunately, the, the mapping was rich and the RK Tech had worked pretty well. I did have some pinging and detonating on like heavy, heavy loads on it, uh, but it, nothing that concerned me. And when I did the top end, there was no pitting in the cylinder or in the, excuse me, in the piston or anything like that. So it wasn't doing any damage, but you could hear it. It's funny, like you get like a steady throttle opening going down the road and the whole bike would kind of rattle. Um, now, I just assumed it was harmonics or whatever until I switched to the TSP head and tune and that went away. So I know that it was actually some detonating going on and causing the whole thing to rattle. So that sucks. Uh, sorry, Kelsey, but yeah, the TSP setup is better. So let's talk a little bit about the TSP. Um, it comes with a head and an insert so you can change out swap domes. Even though the head on these bikes is already a two piece, the TSP, they send you an external like shell and then also the disc and you choose high or medium compression. Um, I actually have both. I've only run the high so far and it's been absolutely incredible. But the big difference, the thing that makes the TSP so much better than anything else I've used is that they tune the ECU and they have spent a ton of time on the dyno tuning the ECU uh, and getting these things right. I chose the trail tune, which gives you one hard enduro map and one MX map. Um, and it's like the little more aggressive hard enduro map and the little less aggressive MX map is what you get with that, that tune. And for me, it's perfect. The hard enduro map is incredible. Tons more torque and power at low throttle openings and low RPM than stock. Uh, and then just the crazy linear power, like almost boring to the point of like, oh, it just didn't feel that exciting except that you're going through the rocks and the nasty stuff so much easier because of it. So um, then the green map is not nearly as violent feeling as the stock green map, but it still pulls like crazy, still super exciting, still really fun to ride, uh, great for hill climbing. Um, if you watch one of my recent videos, you'll see I tried this hill like four times in the white map before I realized I was in the white map. And I was like, 
oh crap, I hit the green map and went right up the hill. So the green map is incredible on this thing. It's just not quite as violent as it used to be. Um, but guys, the TSP tune is incredible. Uh, it reduced the spooge, it cleaned up the bottom end a ton. It's so, so crisp now. It's absolutely brilliant. I really, really, really like it. Um, along with that is pipes, guys. I've run uh, now the stock pipe, a gnarly pipe, and this Moto's pipe. I like the Moto's pipe the best. Partially, it is the best looking. Stainless steel hand welded, it's beautiful, cone pipe. But I do like it better also because it has more low end doesn't rob from the top end, but it's got even more grunt than a gnarly. Um, it's also stronger. It can take hits better than the gnarly uh, without bending too much. And yeah, again, it is beautiful. They're pretty expensive. Um, I think by the time you get them shipped from Turkey, which is where they're from, you're about 400 bucks. But that's, sadly, that's not that far off of FMF now. Um, uh, let's see, oh, I guess kind of along with performance, just the way the bike runs is gearing. Uh, my bike came 1449, the new ones are 1448. Um, I immediately went to a 50, 1450, kind of because all my other wheels are 50, not really because I thought I needed it. Um, and then I decided I was gonna race a hard enduro and try working on that kind of stuff. So I swapped to a 1352, that's what's on this wheel setup. I really like that gearing for the hard stuff, but I think um, for my normal riding day in, day out, I'm going to go back to a 50. I'm going to run 1350. I think that's going to be perfect. The transmission in these things, guys, is my favorite KTM transmission so far. It's kind of like a hybrid between the old W and the old XC. Um, the gears are very evenly placed. Uh, they're a little further apart than the, X, the old XC or SX, um, but they're not as gapped as the W. So I really like them. I think they're freaking amazing. So super rad. Uh, let's talk about guards, guys. Bulletproof designs, hands down, best radiator guards. They also have awesome uh, TPS guard, power valve guard, it's up underneath there. Um, swing arm guard. Bulletproof Designs is one of the best companies in this business, guys. Please support them. They're amazing. They make amazing stuff. Um, that being said, I don't use their disc guards. Uh, I like System Tech Racing's disc guard. Uh, it's got a G10 or carbon fiber blade that you can choose which one you want. Aluminum carrier, obviously, but that blade is nice and strong and it doesn't hang up like the aluminum ones. Same with the front one. Nice big, uh, you know, I'm running the, the G10 because it's a little less money. Uh, but blade and it's super, super strong and it slides off of rocks. Oh, also this thing's awesome from XC gear, the uh, little nut for, or bolt to hold the axle, just nice and clean. One less thing to hit on a rock. Right now, there's a bunch of you guys who are freaking out that my bike is this dirty. Well, I just got done riding this morning, <laughs> so sorry. Um, but that's kind of this channel, guys. If you're new here, uh, make sure you consider subscribing because um, this channel is all about real dirt bikers, not guys who just polish their bikes and shine them up and say that they ride them. I actually ride the crap out of this thing. 160 hours in a year or just under a year, I think is quite a bit of riding. I mean, you know there's some people that get lots more than that, but I would say most people don't get even close to that in a year. Um, I actually beat the crap out of these things. Bulletproof Design Shifter is incredible. Um, it's really nice. It's a billet aluminum. Uh, lever and then it's got a steel insert in there. It's really sweet. Um, really, really happy with that. Let's talk about the Carapax foot pegs. I started with a stock um, style. So it was just stock position, stock everything. They're stainless steel, um, nice sharp um, teeth on them. Uh, and then I ended up going to a five down and five back setup, which I really like for the harder stuff and actually the smoother stuff too. Puts my weight a little further back, a little more on the rear wheel, get a little more traction. Also opens up the cockpit just a little bit. I'm not a big guy, I'm about 5'10", 5'11", somewhere in there. Um, but it opens up the cockpit, it feels really good. So I really like those. Those are not tearing my boots up extra fast. Uh, I thought they probably would, but I think the fact that they're flat across this way and not pointy this way, 
um, helps them not tear the boots up too bad. Right, let's talk about uh, skid plate. I'm running the stock skid plate right now, uh, but I adapted a, an enduro engineering uh, beaver tail to it to protect that, mainly to let it slide. I put a Bulletproof Designs link guard on there to protect it against hits so it doesn't do any damage. But the beaver tail is more about making it slide over the rocks and logs and things like that. So I adapted that on there. Quick spoiler alert, guys. I've got a new skid plate here. I'm not going to talk about where that came from yet, but some of you might figure it out, but probably not. You're probably going to guess wrong about that, where that came from. Pretty excited about that. DDC sprocket, hands down, best sprocket you can possibly buy for your bike. They're relatively expensive, about 110 bucks, but I've had them last over 500 hours. So honestly, per hour, it's cheaper than anything else you can buy. Crosslink components, guys. These swing arm guards are the best in the business. I don't need to talk about them. They're the best. If you want to protect your swing arm, buy these guards. Just trust me. Um, a Cherubis chain guide. One of the biggest surprises of the bike build. This thing has held up well. I couldn't get a TM when I needed one. So I got this and it is actually held up amazingly well. I was not expecting that. I might be switching over to just a Cherubis Chir um, chain guide. That thing has been incredible. It's a stock chain, 161 hours on it, guys. Uh, Bulletproof Designs wheels. I've been running these things now for the whole time and they are amazing. I have a couple sets uh, and they're absolutely incredible. Like they haven't bent or torn up. The spokes have stayed nice and tight after I, you know, ran them for a little bit, then tightened them up. They've stayed super tight. Really, really like those wheels. Um, the KTM wheels are obviously very, very good too. But uh, as far as having some spares or, um, you know, having like a setup for hard and duro, setup for fast, setup, whatever, I definitely recommend Bulletproof Designs um, or Warp 9. I'm getting Warp 9s for my XR, uh, but Bull Bulletproof, they only make them for KTM. So uh, I decided to try them and I really like them. Spanish Fly Spark Rusher, guys. One of my favorite things I've done to this bike because I got to keep my little shorty pipe and I got a turbine core style spark arrestor. Thing has been amazing. It's not clogged up. Uh, it sounds good. It's perfect. The new gen, this is the old gen. The new gen is lighter. So if you're worried about weight, the new gen is like 150 grams lighter. It's quite a bit lighter. So yeah, big fan of Spanish Fly. Uh, System Tech Racing brake cooler here. And now I've added this uh, to hold more fluid and also cool a little bit because of the overheating of the brakes. Make sure you subscribe for that whole saga. <laughs> I had a, a rough race because of that, but um, uh, I think I maybe have it solved. But anyway, subscribe, guys. We'll go into that later. Uh, more protection stuff. Enduro engineering flag guards, guys. I switched to these about four years ago, three now, three years ago now, um, on my old my 125, and I will never go back. They got this aluminum piece that bolts the perch, plastic everywhere else, really strong. I've hit lots of trees, rocks, things like that. I haven't hurt my fingers, haven't grabbed the brake or clutch. Um, they've held up really well. I, every now and then I have to replace this, you know, this piece, but it's no big deal. G-Rip bar ends, Rick Emerson, thank you very much. Uh, they're amazing, honestly. They, the thing I like about these better than the other ones, I'll try to make sure I mention why I like things better uh, and not just because they're cool or I got them for free. Um, this actually goes over the bar. It, just a little bit goes over the bar, bolts in, you know, I thread, you know, thread the bar, bolts in. And so then when you hit things like bam, bam, like that, it's not just the bolt that's resisting it moving, right? Because you bend those bolts a lot on the other style. This thing is, since it's over the bar, it resists bending, moving. It's really, really good. Bomber bar switches from Moto Minded. These things are awesome. I absolutely hate the stock button. That's another thing I guess that I don't like about this bike from in stock form. The stock button is stupid. I don't like it. <laughs> if you like it, that's fine. I hate it. Most people do. You can't find the start. It is terrible. So I, and I also like having them separate. Uh, this is my kill. That is the start. The reason this is black is I tore this, um, uh, cover and they sent me, I actually, they sent me a set like a, a red and black and I had already used the red one. So I just put a black one on there and I, rem I know that this is kill, but anyway, so bomber bar switches, they're better now. Um, I've actually got a new set to put on, uh, 
that are the updated version, a little bit lighter, a little bit more machined down. I don't really care about the lightness because there's hardly any difference, but I do uh, like those switches a lot. If you want <coughs> those switches, definitely look at Moto Minded. Um, he also has the dual button. Like if you like the two buttons on the same thing, he's got those. So um, I just like them separate like this. I start over here. Um, one of the more controversial things that I put on my bike, you guys, a lot of you guys whined and moaned about, <laughs> <laughs> is the R Enduro clutch assist, easy clutch. I love this thing, <laughs> it's awesome. Um, I've adjusted it a lot, I actually don't have it um, nearly as assisted as I did in the first place because it kind of made it feel funny. Um, I'll go into that later. I'm gonna be doing a long-term review on that here very soon, um, but, and like and how to maintain it and all that good stuff. But that thing's awesome. All links to all this stuff, guys, is in the description below. Um, so make sure you check that out if you want to. Also, I have to jump in here and say um, a massive thank you to the channel's biggest sponsor, which is Rocky Mountain ATV MC. They are awesome. They're employee owned and operated. They're very, very good to me. They're very, very good to the sport. Um, I love those guys. <laughs> They're amazing. Uh, and they have brought me on as uh, an affiliate. If you want to help me out and save money and get free shipping and get Rocky Mountain Bucks and all the other things, link in the description. Um, use that. I get a little kickback. You save money. They're amazing. I have to say thank you. Uh, the tires on this bike are from them right now. Um, that's the MX T35s, and I really, really like them. Enduro Hog. Um, another thing you can get from Ben Nicholson. And again, I have to say a massive thank you to Ben Nicholson at First Track Motorsports. Um, he is up there in the description. It's firsttrackmotorsports.com slash highlands with an S, cycles. Um, he sells the Carapax foot pegs. He sells the Enduro Hog. Uh, he sells S3 gear. He sells my favorite thing on the bike, which we're gonna talk about here in just a second. They sell the F3 cleaner, the WR Performance F3 cleaner for air filters, which is like seriously cool. Sells the Klaxon, uh, grab handles oh all oh, these fm parts um full wrap fork guards which are really really nice i like those a lot actually i'm bad about tearing up forks because i kind of suck at dirt biking sometimes and i slide back and my forks hit rock anyway um but yeah there's a whole list if you go to that first track moto.com slash highlands cycles link in the description uh, you'll see a whole list of all the things I'm using. Oh, the mitigator clutch weight. It's the other thing I'm using. I'm using a mitigator clutch weight because uh, at the time there was no flywheel weight for these uh, and I wanted to slow the motor down a little bit. And so I went with the heaviest mitigator clutch weight. It works good. Uh, it's not as effective as a flywheel weight. Um, engineers on here are going, bah, 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 bah. so it's not, I get it. Um, so you got to put a little bit more weight on there uh, to get the same desired effect, but it works. It's awesome. Um, also got the Enduro Hog, the, he sells these Enduro Hog engine cover over here and on the other side. It's just nice to protect that thing and keep it scratch free. Obviously you can see I've got the Acherby's tank. This is the biggest tank offered for this bike right now. It holds about 3.2 gallons. Um, had no problem doing almost 80 miles in between gas stops at the death march. There's plenty of gas left. Fuel light didn't come on, none of that stuff. So like... That tank is my favorite. No, you don't notice this part of it at all. Um, at least I don't. Uh, I do notice that it's heavy when I fill it up with gas, but I don't notice this. I can still get forward on the bike, make turns, all that good stuff. The bars I'm running, guys, I'm running Woods High Pro Tapers, which may or may not be a thing ever again anymore <laughs> because uh, Pro Taper is owned by Tucker Rocky and Tucker Rocky's out of business now. They got bought. Uh, by some car company. I don't even know. It's whatever. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, let's see. Oh, moose balls, guys. Moose balls, moose balls, moose balls. They were new to me this year. They are my favorite foam insert. Um, I still really, really like Nitro Moose. I'm running Nitro Moose in the XR for Mexico. But um, for hard and durry, just normal trail, whatever. Dude, the moose balls are absolutely incredible. They're probably incredible for the high-speed stuff, but um, Jeff at New, New Tech has sponsored me for the 1,000 uh, pre-running, so that's what I'm running. And I still like them very much, and they're about 50 bucks a wheel cheaper. So, yeah, 
Guys, I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized I never even mentioned the counter shocks. I'm super, super sorry, Nathan. Uh, I honestly, that was just a total brain fart and I must mention it here real fast. The counter shocks on the bike guy was one of the very early things I did to the bike. I know a lot of you think it's snake oil. I know a lot of you are whiny, complaining, whatever. I'm here to tell you it works. He also has a 100% money back guarantee. Just freaking try it. If you don't like it, send it back. I'll give you all your money back. Thank you, Counter Shocks. I think it's an amazing product. It's not a game changer. It's not something everybody has to have, but it works and it's pretty freaking cool. So anyway, back to the video. They're both good products. I like the Moose Balls better. The feel seems to be better. Um, they're lasting a very, very long time. I absolutely love them. They're so, so good. And guys, for my absolute favorite, single favorite thing I've done to this bike for the money. So uh, probably the suspension work and getting the chassis working really good is my favorite thing about that. And the, or the TSP, get the motor working really good. By me, my favorite thing, but those are very expensive things. But for bang for buck, my absolute favorite thing I've done to this bike is that right there. The S3 brake spring thingy, I call it. That thing is truly a game changer, guys. Uh, they only make them for um, Brembo brakes or probably the Magura, what, you know, all the Austrian things. I think they're all shaped the same. Unfortunately, they don't fit on betas. They don't fit on uh, YZs, but uh, Fast Company makes something like that for those bikes. So if you have Nissan brakes, go to Fast Company uh, and check out their stuff. But that thing is amazing. I've talked about it a bunch on here and on Facebook and all that stuff. It just adds pressure to the... It, it makes it take more pressure to hit the brake so you can actually tell what you're doing so you can actually modulate the brakes way better it's not so much of an on and off switch it's absolutely the best i abs yeah so i've just said absolutely a thousand times but i mean it it's so good all right guys i i think that's about it i love this bike this is hands down my favorite two-stroke dirt bike i have ever owned period um now I've been very fortunate to get all these parts for free, uh, but I bought this thing full boat because I got an early, early one and my dealer couldn't give me a deal or they could have, but they wanted to make money and I get it and I, I don't care. So I paid full pop for this thing. I didn't pay over full pop like some people were, um, but I paid full boat. It was twelve and a half thousand dollars $12,500, which is a crazy amount of money, <laughs> but it, uh, it's worth every penny, every penny. Um, it has been absolutely brilliant. Um, I can't wait to keep putting hours on it. I'm not selling it anytime soon. Um, I'm gonna keep this bike for a very long time. Uh, and yeah, it's incredible. Guys, I have some other announcements. So big, 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 giant, massive, crazy announcement uh, for me is that I am planning on, unless something goes terribly wrong in my life, I am planning on buying a 2024 Beta 300RR race. I know, I know. All you Beta guys are freaking out right now, and that's awesome. I'm glad to join the Italian club. Um, I'm excited about it. They actually changed some stuff. They got twin spark ignition, new chassis. Uh, I think that's the biggest things. Uh, but I like Betas, guys. I've always liked, well, okay, that's not true. I have liked Betas now for a long time. Um, the ones I've ridden, the recent ones have been amazing. Um, and I'm kind of tired of buying KTMs, to be honest. Uh, our 24 XCW that was I bought for Zach. Uh, Zach is in the military right now. He's doing National Guard. So actually, that a lot of content coming on that. I got new cool stuff coming. I'm not going to mention it right now, but like big stuff coming for that bike too. But yes, I am planning on getting a Beta 300RR race for 2024. But to do that, I've got to sell my 2018 300 XCW named Daisy. Uh, I just cannot afford to have both those bikes. Um, and this, like this, I consider this my like go fast race bike. I want to build the Beta into a legit hard enduro bike, but I need to sell my KTM to do that. So if anyone is interested, Morgan at Highland-Cycles.com, let me know. Uh, right now it's got about 600 hours on it. Uh, I had a new crank at 450 hours. Uh, it's about due for a top end, so uh, it needs some cleaning up. I'm going to take the chainsaw mount off of it and all that good stuff. 
uh, gonna clean it up. But I am looking to sell that thing, guys. If you're interested, let me know. The bike is amazing, it runs great. It's gonna come with a whole bunch of parts. Um, yeah, there's literally zero wrong with it. I just can't afford to have both. I gotta let that girl go to uh, be able to fit the beta in the garage. So, um, like financially, not physically, there's a ton of room in my new garage. <laughs> but my wife is like, eh, you can get another new bike, but that one's gotta go. So, um, yeah, I am definitely planning on getting that thing. Hopefully, I don't know, we'll see. It's probably gonna be next spring. I'm gonna try to get it from Dan North at True North Motos. Um, we're gonna try to make that happen. Um, and yeah, I'm fired up about that, guys. It's gonna be awesome. So there'll be a ton of content coming from that. This bike is gonna stay my fast, go fast race bike. I'm probably gonna strip it down a little bit, maybe maybe make it not quite as guarded up and hardened early as I have. Uh, and make it more of a desert hair scramble race bike, uh, and then turn the Beta more into a um, nasty hard enduro bike. Um, so yeah, th this thing's gonna be getting some changes and stuff like that, so. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me for this video. I know it's kind of a long one, a lot of me talking. I hope that was okay. Um, comment any questions you have below. If, did I miss something that you remember me putting on here and I didn't talk about? Oh, uh, real quick, the fan. Um, Tusk fan has been great. The Tusk fan controller has not been great. Uh, that thing has, uh, I'm on my second one and then this one's failing, so I need a third one. I think I'm actually gonna do something different. I'm gonna probably get the, I'm gonna try to merge the Trail Tech controller onto this fan. But I do like this fan because it draws half of what the Trail Tech fan draws. So um, yeah, if there's anything else you guys wanna know, comment below. Um, if you're new here, subscribe. Tons more content coming on this. Tons more content coming on the 24300XCW and uh, hopefully a 24300RR race if I can make it happen. Thanks guys, I love you. Get out, spread the gospel of two wheels and I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring guys to work on, but way more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!